What is the rapture? What does it really say about it? What is it? They don't know anything. So we talked about that. Antichrist. The rapture. Um, we have talked about the tribulation. We, um, we've talked about the mark of the beast. This week, we're going to talk about a subject called the new world order. The new world order. For, first, I just want you to understand, with the new world order, the new world order, that's not going to look good, the new world order, um, that cannot come into power until the restrainer. That's the rapture. That's the church. That's the Holy Spirit. That's leaving this earth. And the restrainer's gone. And, and then these things can come in. But these things have always been in play. I told you that every week. Satan does not know the time, the day, the hour, doesn't know any of it. So he has always got to have whatever he can to be ready. Now, how many of y'all have heard much about the New World Order? You hear it mentioned sometimes? Does it like kind of just like, uh, like make you sick to your stomach, scare you when you re or just like, uh, oh, it'll be great. We'll all be one government and one person will rule the world. That's going to be awesome. How many of y'all think that? One currency, that's going to be great. Everyone, this going to be awesome. I want to talk to you about that today, all right? Let's go, go to my first slide, if you would, there. It's Halloween 1938. Was anybody on the earth in 1938? He was going Orson Welles on Saturday night for CBS Network. He would read a story, and it was kind of like a story hour and, and things, and they would kind of act things out and do stuff. Well, on this time, on Halloween, he started to read the H.G. Wells book, The War of the Worlds. Just reading that book gets a little boring. And, and so he's reading that book, and this was the first time that a book reading was done, and as he read it, all of a sudden there was an interruption, and someone came on and said, a reporter came on and said, I'm sorry, we got to break this. And it sounded like a news report. It was the first time they ever faked news. Isn't that interesting? It's the first time they ever faked the news report. So, so he, is, um, he, he tells his story and this news report fictionally chronicling, or chronicling the, the landing of spaceships and aliens in New York City. It started as a normal Saturday night radio show, and the reporter cuts in, I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is a special news bulletin from the Intercontinental Radio News. Now, the first thing that should have stood out to him was, there is no such thing, or was no such thing, as the Intercontinental Radio News. That was fake right there. But everyone fell for it. People went into a frenzy. They truly believed we were under attack by aliens. Weeks. It took weeks to settle people down. It took months to convince people that it didn't really happen. I, I tell you what, I'm pretty impressed with Orson Welles that he could pull that off and what he did. Um, that was pretty, I mean, he was ahead of his time for sure. So, all this happens... The War of the Worlds. But see, H.G. Wells wrote other books as well. And another book he wrote was The New World Order. The New World Order. And in that book, he says this, and I quote. There's a slide for his quote. Countless people will hate the New World Order and will die protesting against it. Does that sound biblical? The new world order is going to come. And there are people who are going to protest against it. Who's going to protest against it? You're going to say, I'm not taking the mark. I'm not taking it. And he says people are going to die for that. That's just interesting that hit the play of how he says that and what we know the meaning of that is. So let's jump ahead. 1977, go from 1938 to 1977. Space vehicles Voyager 1 and 2. 
were launched. Voyagers 1 and 2. Not many know that on those two vehicles, they were exploratory um, rockets that we sent up to go out. And, and during that time, not many people know that there was a recorded message from President Jimmy Carter on both of those. It was a gold record. This gold record, uh, the gold record, let me just read to you what Jimmy Carter put on this. If you play the record, which, you know, the first thing right there, if we find aliens, we expect aliens to have a record player. I mean, that, that's my first thing that kind of stands out to me. And it's this gold record. This is what the gold record looked on one side, turned it over, and had all the little lines where you could play it. And there was these symbolism and different things on it that were supposed to be a message that aliens were, could read and understand. Go to the next slide. And this is what Jimmy Carter said on it. This Voyager spacecraft was constructed by the United States of America. A community of 240 million human beings among the more than 4 billion who inhabit planet Earth. Still divided into nation states, but rapidly becoming a single global civilization. This is 1977, Jimmy Carter, talking about how we're rapidly becoming a global civilization, a new world order. Then he says, we cast this message into the cosmos, a present from a small distant world. We hope someday, having solved the problems we face, to join a community of galactic civilizations. Thank you, President Jimmy Carter. Um, that is, how many of y'all have any idea that that was sent up into space by President Jimmy Carter? Look it up. You'll find it. It's all over the place once you look it up. He sent a message to aliens and told them that we are becoming a new world order. New world order has been talked about by presidents forever. Um, I mean, we have it on our dollar bill. Back of it, our seal, our great seal on the back of it. It, it has the Latin... Um, and I'm not even going to try to say what the Latin is, but the bottom of that Latin underneath the pyramid says New World Order. New World Order. And that's what they believed when they came away from, they believed they were coming to the U.S. and they were doing something, uh, our founding fathers, and they were doing something that was going to catch on, and their goal was, doesn't it seem like every time man gets a little bit of power, he wants all the power? Does anybody see that? You can't, man just can't have enough, can he? So, every president has talked about it. Just go and look at it. I, I pulled a montage, but it was too long to just listen to all the presidents talk about New World Order. The one who talked about it the most was George H. Bush. He talked about it a lot. We're working for a New World Order. He talked about it all the time. A new world order. So, the new world order. Um, we've been talking about forever, but I want to go back. I want to look at our, the ancient new world order. The first time we see a world order taking place, trying to get started. Genesis 11 is where we're going to look at. Genesis 1 and 2 tells us this. It says, at one time the whole earth had the same language and vocabulary... As people migrated from the east, they found a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. Shinar is the Hebrew word for the area that we know today as Babylon in Iraq. Babylon in Iraq. They started to build a city, a tower to reach heaven. It was to make a name for themselves and it was to be basically their statue, their God. Look what we have accomplished. We don't need God to get to heaven. We just built our own way. So, Genesis 11, 6, 7 tells us a little bit more. It says, the Lord said, If they have begun to do this as 
one people all having the same language, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. So come, let us go down there and confuse their language so that they will not understand one another's speech. What was so wrong with this? That they were working together. That, that always seems like a great thing. We're all coming together. What's wrong with that? The saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely, is very true. The heart of man is evil. We always hear he or she is just a good person. I'm sorry, I, I, I believe we are all evil people born into sin. And it's only by the grace of God that we don't follow our flesh but we follow the voice of God. And we follow the leading that the Holy Spirit puts inside of us because we are born into this world. You might disagree with me, but I just don't believe we're all good people. I believe we're good people now because Jesus lives inside of us. That's why we're good people. That's why we're better people. Only because of Him, only because of His grace, only because of His sacrifice. So, when you have people go together and work together, they are not going to come up with something good. There's a selfishness that's going to come in no matter what happens. Paul tells us this in Acts 17, 26 and 27. He says this, And he, and he is made from one blood, every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for Him and find Him, though He is not far from each one of us. Though He is not far from each one of us. The people of Babel decided not to seek after God but to rely, to rely on their own power and seek their own self-interest. This is the original, this is the original new world order. It was driven by pride. It was driven by self-efficiency, rebellion. It was a clear echo of Satan's ambition as described by Isaiah. Isaiah said this about him. Isaiah said, this is Satan speaking. I will ascend to the heavens. I will set up my throne above the stars of God. And I will make myself the most high. Does that sound familiar when you read the story of Tower of Babel? It's echoed the voice of Satan. So if you go away from God, you're listening to someone else. And we see the Tower of Babel, that's who they're listening to. That's who they're paying attention to. Now, i got to tell you, I've said many times that God did not put lines on the earth, but after reading what Paul said, that God put us into areas. I want to show you a picture. And I sometimes make mistakes, guys. Let's just be honest. Sometimes. Not always. You're going to re keep that recording, aren't you? Um, I want you to look at this picture. After Noah... Ham, Sham, and Japheth spread out. We know that. The Scripture tells us that they go their own way. But they all come back together at the Tower of Babel. And they come back together because there was a man named Nimrod. Nimrod was really the first appointed king the world ever saw. And Nimrod went to each one of those areas. Nimrod, before they build the Tower of Babel, I mean, while they're getting all together, Nimrod builds Nineveh. He's going and building cities. He's bringing them together. And they are looking at this man and thinking, he, he is who we need to follow. He's the one who can lead us. He was a great hunter, the Bible says. Um, supposedly with the bow and arrow. He was amazing with a bow and arrow. And so they all come together at the Tower of Babel. But look, after the Tower of Babel, they split up again. Ham, Shem, Japheth. Then we have the Hemetic, the Semitic, and the Japhetic. Ham's tribe 
They all went out together. And that's where we have Africa and Arabia. And then we have uh, Shem's group. The Semitic group goes to Assyria. And then we have the Japhetic group, which is Asia Minor and Europe. And it's where the worlds began. It's where God said, okay, this is where you're going to go. It's very interesting when you look back, though. You can look back and you want to know where we get who and who where. Just read your Bible. Just read your Bible. So, the first world order wanted to build their way to heaven, not wait on God's plan, which is one day heaven is actually going to come down from the skies down to the earth. We're going to have a new Jerusalem that's going to set, the earth is going to be burnt up and there's going to be a new Jerusalem setting right here on this planet. And we're going to spend eternity. But they wanted to get to it. They didn't have the time to, how many of y'all have ever seen people just because of their lack of patience, they do crazy things. So, when I look at this and, and, and we see the whole thing with the Tower of Babel and um, there's something really interesting because we have organizations in this world that pattern themselves, literally pattern themselves after the Tower of Babel. Look at this picture. This is the European Union. And that picture to the left, which there weren't pictures in Bible times, but there's a painting. And that painting on the left is a painting of what the Tower of Babel might have looked like. And it's a very common, very famous painting of the Tower of Babel. The one in the middle is Europe, many tongues, one voice. Sound familiar? And what are they using as the backdrop for that ad, the Tower of Babel? We're coming together again. And then if you look at the next picture, that is a multi-million dollar building. It is the EU Parliament in Strasbourg. In Strasbourg, that's the part, and the parliament was built to look like the pit. Can you see it? It's built to look like the picture of that Tower of Babel. There are people who are still looking at that, paying attention to it, not looking at the Bible for a godly reason, but looking at the Bible, and there are certain people they pick out and say, we're going to be like them. Look at the next picture. Just again, the EU. They chose, Revelations tells us about a, a woman riding the beast. Their emblem, they have this statue of a woman riding a beast in the front of every EU building in Europe. It's a different way. It's, it's made different, but every one of them is a woman riding a beast. Then on the Euro, they have a woman riding a beast. I just want you to understand... I have an issue, you can make your own decision, but I have a little bit of an issue when I see a certain organization that patterns themselves off of something that we know is evil. Does anybody have a problem I'm saying there? There's, there's a problem there. If we're looking at this new world order, there are many who are looking for that new world order. Modern attempts. Modern attempts at the New World Order. Um, well, we had one uh, at World War II, the Third Reich. And I'm not going to go into detail. You guys have seen enough movies on that. You know about that. We can all agree that was evil. And the number one plan was to take over the world and have everything under Hitler. And we talked about him last week, too, because he just keeps coming up in this stuff. You'll be surprised at how many times you find a dictator and how much they pay attention to the occult and how much they pay attention to the end times and they do things that are end times type stuff because they're led by a voice. So we know that was, so we're not going to go into detail about that, but let me talk about another one. And... 
Let's talk about the UN for a moment, the United Nations. The United Nations, no one contributes more financially to the United Nations than the USA. But we are constantly on the wrong end of the criticisms of every nation that are part of the UN, except for Israel. We get it the most, Israel gets it the most next. The UN sits on 18 acres of New York City, but it is not the property of New York City, or is that property belong to the United States of America? It is this little vacuum of 18 acres that the world owns. That's a start of a new world. Only the world owns this. No one can own it. And you have the United Nations building there. There are biblical and peaceful art renderings all through, around and through the United Nations. But they are sorely misrepresented. The UN has been overrun with fraud, international mismanagement, and ludicrous behavior at times. In 2005, under the Secretary General Kofi Annan, where um, he was charged with investigating, or they were charged with investigating their own member nations for human rights abuses without each of them knowing it. Then in 2006, the UN created a human rights committee. And these are the nations they chose to oversee the human rights committee. Sudan, Zimbabwe, China, Russia, and Saudi Arabia. That's putting the fox over the hen house, guys. The UN waited until January 2005. Just test that date for me. January 2005, it took for the UN to acknowledge the Holocaust of the Jewish people. The UN has allowed dictators like Hugo Chavez. How many of you remember that when he came and spoke? That was on the news quite a bit. You saw clips of it everywhere. Dictators like Hugo Chavez and, and Muammar Gaddafi were invited, not, they didn't come and act, they were invited to come and speak, to hold court in front of the member nations. Something is wrong with that picture. How could you consider the UN to be serious about world peace when they invite dictators to come in and speak? Known dictators. There is a plan for the UN, and the first leader of the UN told us what it was. The first leader of the UN was a man named Paul Henry Spock. He was the first elected president of the United Nations, and he was also the architect of the European Union. Spock said this, We do not want another committee. We have too many already. What we want is a man of sufficient stature to hold the allegiance of all people. Holding the allegiance of all people is everyone's going to love him, everyone's going to respect him, everyone's going to obey him. And to lift us out of the economic moras into uh, which we are sinking, <clears throat> send us such a man and he be be he God or devil, we will receive him. That is the quote of the first leader of the United Nations. This is who we are. If he's a God or a devil, give him to us. That man should make you shiver a little bit. Then we see this. Pope Benedict, um, 26, no, 16. In a letter, July 7th, 2009, the Pope told us this. He said, There is a strongly felt need for a reform of the United Nations organization and likewise of the economic institutions and international finance so that the concept 
of the family of nations can acquire real teeth needed to tackle economic and social injustice. This comes around all the time. There is surgent need of a true world political authority. Furthermore, a world security that would need to be universally recognized and to be vested with the effective power to, insecure security, to ensure security for all. What he's asking for is a global law enforcement. And let the UN bring it through the United Nations. Ted Turner said this right after he gave $1 billion to the United Nations. Ted, what do you think America's place in the new world order should be? It's always been seen as the global policeman. But as you said before, you know, it's hard to see with all these military conflicts where the winner and loser lies. What, what should America be doing I think globally? the global policeman should be the United Nations. Globally. The global policeman should be the United Nations. Globally. The global policeman should be the United Nations. Globally. The global policeman should be the United Nations. This idea of dismantling the police and replacing them with something else is not a new idea. I'm just telling you, it's not a new idea. This is the new world order. It's been out there since the Tower of Babel. And it's going, it's planned out, it's laid out because it is a one world government. It is a one currency. It is everything Jesus told us. John tells us in Revelations we have it in Thessalonians. It's about a new world order that has to come where the Antichrist will be head of it. Now, we've talked about these things, the rapture, the Antichrist. We talked about all these things. And all of them kind of turn out with, man, I don't want to be there. That's scary. So let me end with this. The future new world order. The future new world order. It's called the millennium. What is a millennium? Some of y'all think that's when I preach. Um, but uh, the millennium is a thousand years. A thousand years of peace. A thousand years under one government. That government is Jesus Christ. See, no man can handle the power but Jesus who has never sinned. Who came just simply to sacrifice himself for you. He's the only one who can handle that. And so you want to know there is a new world order that's going to work. Even the new world order that will be under the Antichrist is not going to work. It's going to be for a while, but it's not going to work. It's not going to last. But it will under Jesus. If you look here, today we're in the period of grace. Today we're in the period of grace. Show my, my next slide if you would. We're in the period of grace. The next thing to happen is the rapture. After the rapture, it's the tribulation. After the seven years of tribulation, it's the second coming of Jesus. Because see, the rapture, you don't see Jesus. We who know Him, have Him in our heart, we hear a trump and we hear a call and we're gone in the twinkling of an eye. Supposedly we're all going to be naked because everything I see, clothes are piled on their floor when people go to in the rapture. Every movie is made, clothes are folded or clothes are just floating. It's always like that. But, but I know we're going to have a heavenly body. Praise God. And we're going to meet our Savior in the air. He's not going to come to the earth, so it's not can't really refer to as the second coming. And then we have seven years tribulation. During that seven years of tribulation, while that's happening here on the earth, the bride of Christ is going to be celebrating the supper with the supper of the Lamb for seven years. In the Old Testament, um, even into the New Testament, biblical times, 
the marriage supper lasted seven days. It was a celebration for seven days. God said, what is a year on earth is a, a day in heaven, a day in seven years. Seven years we are going to have a celebration. Then after that's the second coming, he's going to come back. He is going to take care of business. We're going to be with him, but he's going to take, all, take care of all the business. And then we're going to have the millennium, a thousand year reign here on earth. And Jesus is going to be in control. Complete. He already is, but we're all, it's a time of peace. And then after that thousand years, Satan's going to somehow rear his head again, and then he's going to be gone forever. And when he's gone forever, after the thousand years, the new Jerusalem is going to come down. The earth is going to be burnt up. The uh, all is going to be burnt, and the new Jerusalem is going to come down, and we're going to live there for eternity. That's what Scripture tells us. This is the order. This is the order that we believe. This is the order. Some people like to go into the old mid trib and all that kind of stuff. I tell you what, if you want to believe in mid trib, fine. I'm going to I'm going to stick with pre trib. I want to be out of here. I don't know about the rest of you. I want to be out of here. Well, Isaiah eleven six through eight tells us this about that millennial time. It says, In that day the wolf and the lamb will live together. Leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put its hand in the nest of deadly snakes without harm. So, I don't know. People always want to know, do my pets go to heaven? I have no idea, but you got hope. Because Jesus talks about animals in the millennial reign. So you might have your pet in heaven. I don't know. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but hey, he talks about animals. They came from somewhere. All right? Come here, animal lovers, and want to see your pet in heaven. <laughs> All right, then there's just some scriptures to hold on to, okay? The new world order will finally be a time of peace. There will be no more wars. No more wars, no more <sighs> peace times. Isaiah 2.4 The Lord will mediate between nations and will settle international disputes. How awesome would that be for two nations to talk to each other and Jesus show up and say, guys, let me help you with this. And they listen. Go to my next slide. International disputes, they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. That means they're going to take, they're going to take their weapons and turn them in to things they can use to farm, things they can use to build with, because there is no need for a weapon anymore. Nation will no longer fight against nation nor train for war any more. This will be a time of justice and prosperity. Only Jesus can truly give us that. Guys, it's closer all the time for Jesus to come back. There are things happening in our world so fast right now that there is no way that the prophets that go around and speak can say, Jesus is coming, people. Be ready. Chris and I were talking about this the other day. We just feel like he's coming back any minute, and we have to do everything we can to reach and get as many people as we can to be in heaven. So my prayer for you is that you will be a witness for Jesus. Everywhere you are, every phone conversation you're in, every person you talk to, if you go through the store, wherever you are, you will be a witness for Jesus. You're going to come in. I'm praying you come to church and know what it's like to fellowship with brothers and sisters of Christ. It's wonderful to have a church family. It's wonderful to have a church family. So, in this room, or even online, I've got to ask you, 
before we wrap this up. Jesus is coming back. He's coming for His bride. To be part of His bride, you have to have Jesus in your heart. You have to know Him as Savior. And to know that you are ready that when He comes, you'll go with Him. Bow your heads. Close your eyes just for a moment. Even if you're in your living room, just take a moment. Let's get all the other distractions off for just a moment. And would you take a moment and just, the question is, are you ready? Are you ready? In this room and wherever you might be if you're watching this, Today, you can be ready. Matter of fact, in this room with eyes closed, is there anyone in this room that say, I'm not sure, and today I want to be ready. I want to make sure that I am ready to meet Jesus. If that is you, with eyes closed, just raise your hand just for a second. Just put your hand up. Because we're going to say a prayer together. Praise you. If you're at home, I want you to know it doesn't mean you had to raise your hand or be in the church service. We want you here, but that doesn't mean you cannot accept Jesus. Matter of fact, when you in your heart said, I want to be ready, Jesus heard that because he knows your heart. He hears you. So can we just... Can we just say this prayer for just a moment? The... You will not find, I mean, well, there is kind of a layout of it, but Jesus never told anyone, say this prayer after me. Jesus just said, follow me. So I'm going to say to you today, if you are moved right now, then start following Jesus. Just follow him. Change your life. Allow him to change you. Allow him to come in to your heart. So can we just say a prayer? It's a prayer that we say, and it kind of seals the the moment. Can we say this? Church, say it with me. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and save me. Change me. Jesus, thank you. I'm going to follow you wherever you lead me. I love you, Jesus. Amen. And amen. If you're online and, and you said that prayer, please, there's going to be an email that's going to go across the bottom of the screen. Send us an email. Let us know. We got a book that we want to send to you. It's called Now What? You know, I'm, I'm saved. Now what do I do? It's a simple title. Makes sense. We want to send that to you. Gives you what, what to read in the Bible first. He's coming back. Be ready. Father, I thank you so much for this congregation. I thank you, Lord, for those that are here. Thank you for those, Lord, that are online. And right now, I just pray, God. I pray a blessing over each one. I bless them today in Jesus' name. Oh, God, not by my words, not by my power. That's nothing. But I bless them in your name, the name Jesus. I pray, Lord, for your favor to be upon them. I pray for the light of your face to shine upon them. I pray, God, that where they go, wherever they go, oh God, they will just experience your favor and your joy and your peace. I pray, Lord. I pray, God, open, every, open the doors, Lord, that lead to you, but close all the doors, Lord, that the enemy would try to Pull them away from you. Open. Open the doors that lead to you. Lead them through open doors, I pray. Make it. Make it obvious, I pray. I pray your blessing upon them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen.